So Daniel, can you unmute yourself and- Oh, there, yourself? yes, I am here. Howdy. Good, thank you for coming on, Daniel. I'm Eddie Vincent from, I'm the president of ip &E. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank uh, you so much for the opportunity. It really, uh, it, I'm, I'm very honored. Yeah, I wasn't really sure what to put for your byline here. I, so I put uh, intellectual profit, profits. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is, but um, I, I thought we're, it'd be interesting. What we're going to do today um, is a, really a, hopefully a paradigm shifting idea that folks can use to build and create a audience while they build content for their book. The, the name of this particular presentation is called The Intentional Hero's Journey, How to Profit as the Subject of Your Own Documentary. Okay. That is totally interesting to me because I can see how I can apply it to my own business. Wait, wait till you just, yes, it's, it's a really a, a very, um, uh, a very cool sort of approach to, to do this. I have slides if I can show them. You should be able to, uh, I have tried to give everyone the ability to share. So you should okay, be able to share great. that. So let me, let me know when you could see the screen. We can see the screen. Great. Um, as, I don't know if you want to wait a few more minutes before we get started or sure, we can wait to yeah. go into it um, because I know people are jumping back and forth and, you know, yeah, you have three rooms, it. right? Well, the third room was really for the, uh, for the speakers to come and test if they wanted to. Ah, so we, I see. we have two rooms today and tomorrow we have one room that's pretty active and then one not. Awesome. Um, so it looks like right now it's just you and I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I have no problems. You just tell me when when to uh, to get underway. I'm really excited about this particular uh, topic. If you are a author, uh, if you are a content creator, if you're an expert, um, this is a as I say a a model to to use uh, to to do a couple of really cool things at the same time. Number one, build an audience for your eventual book. And number two, um, create the content. And create the content in such a way that is it, it, it's very engaging and interesting to the folks that um, are consuming that content, attracted to that content. So you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean when we kind of get underway here. Yeah, what's what's interesting to me because I, I'm a public a small publisher with uh, 40 authors, and I have a weekly meeting, and we're talking about this subject. We're talking about how to build their uh, audience, build their audience, build their platform, uh, and it sounds like this might be a, a different way of doing that, but helping them at the same time. So it just sounds very interesting to me because at the end of the day it is about getting the author known and if it's if what i'm hearing correctly it sounds like you have a, a an interesting way of doing that it's it's a it's an interesting approach that it, it's not it's not I, i'm not the innovator um really i've just seen uh, so many other authors do this um over and over and over again and there's a there's a there's a, there's a pattern um, that you know we'll we'll talk about and give you give you lots of examples of, of what what makes this work essentially. Yeah. So well, we got a couple of people joining us. Um, well, welcome. Nice. Okay, now we're starting to fill up. Good. All right, Daniel, why don't you uh, introduce what this is gonna be about again, because these, these people didn't hear, it's a little different than what I actually have online. So maybe it'd be a good uh, idea to start it, up again. It, it, it marches in lockstep with the intellectual property because what, what this does is it gives you a opportunity. So what we're gonna be chatting about today is 
a model to apply to your book writing, your platform building, and it happens simultaneously. So what we're going to chat about today is called the Intentional Hero's Journey, uh, how to profit as the subject of your own documentary. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Daniel Hall. I have um, a, a, a podcast called the realfastresults.com podcast where um, I've helped uh, publishers and authors for going on a decade now based in Austin, Texas. Um, and I do a lot of speaking, particularly um, on cruise ships. That was my first book, in fact, was speak on cruise ships um, and uh, do, the, do a lot of this sort of speaking, especially since the, uh, you know, the, the pandemic hit us. In, in any event, um, I want to um, I want to welcome you all here today because what we're going to chat about is this idea that is being the intentional hero. Um, in the hero's journey uh, as sort of defined and written about by Joseph Campbell. Um, and we're going to walk you through how to essentially be that subject, be the, be the subject of your own documentary as you're taking your own hero's journey. So let's actually uh, jump into this right now, because here's the phenomenon uh, that I want, I want everyone to understand. Many successful books sprang from challenges uh, where the author set out on a goal and then documented that journey. Okay, this, this, is, this, is, what we're, this is what we're using as the springboard to create our, our experiment, our challenge, if it were, okay? And this, um, the, the books that often do well that is the books I'm about to show you here. Um, they do well because people identify with the hero's journey. In other words, when an author seeks to carry out one of these challenges personally in their own life and document that challenge, that um, oftentimes um, people experiencing it as it happens, and we'll talk more about that, um, become the super fans of, of the challenge, become the super fans of the, um, of the way that this is actually promulgated and uh, put together in the form of a book eventually. Uh, and th the cool thing is, is that there, there are aspects of this that, again, march and lock step with the, the various ways um, that the hero's journey takes place as, again, written about by Joseph Campbell in The Hero uh, with a Thousand Faces. Uh, so for those of you that, that don't know, this was the, the idea behind the hero's journey. Uh, it's, and, and by the way, the um, many, many uh, of today's, shall we say, superstar storytellers, uh, folks like uh, George Lucas, um, and Steven Spielberg and, and others um, have, have basically tipped their hat um, to, to Joseph Campbell and, and this whole idea of the hero's journey and having the elements that, that the hero's journey uh, kind of plays in each one of their stories. And just so that we're kind of clear on what the hero's journey is, I'm not, I'm not a hero's journey or a Joseph Campbell scholar, uh, but just to be clear on it, what Joseph Campbell did um, is he looked at myths across cultures, across societies, and, uh, and across time. And he found a number of elements um, that had the same common denominator throughout them. And, th and most of those were, again, put into, again, the, uh, this idea of the hero's journey. So let me give you some examples. Um, instead of talking about this in the abstract, let's, let's talk about some examples of um, present day authors that have, have done this so that you can uh, essentially take and, and design an experiment, design a challenge um, that that again, you could document. So this book here called The Year of Living Biblically 
again, it, it, the, it describes the challenge in the title of the book. This, uh, this author, A.J. Jacobs, set out to live by the Bible, like the Old Testament for an entire year. And he documented that journey as, as he went through. Um, and, you know, he put it all up on his blog, which, by the way, got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as the year went on, because more people got attracted to the challenge, um, such that when he finally finished the, the challenge and uh, put out this book called The Year of Living Biblically, um, it, it did very, very well, it continues to do very, very well, even to this day. So this is uh, an, an example of what I'm talking about. This is an example of someone that, again, set a challenge for themselves as an author and then did that challenge, tried to live up to that challenge, um, failed at many things, you know, succeeded at many things, but documented the whole thing. And people found, and he found an audience doing this. And this is the other cool thing that I love about this approach is that if you are a no one, uh, if you have like no platform at all, you are brand new even, you can use this approach to attract new people to the challenge, not, the, not necessarily the book, to, to become engaged and bonded with you. And perfect example of this and and let me give you some some other examples of what i'm talking about here um this one um another one called the um uh the it's called a life pro of productivity so what this gentleman did is essentially did the same kind of thing by the way um this was also a year time frame where this person put together um, a number of experiments to increase his productivity, okay? And the, the cool thing about this is that some of them failed and some of them succeeded in a very, very big way. And he documented um, all, of that, all of this as he was doing it for the year at, this, at his blog called uh, alifeforproductivity.com and essentially did the same exact kind of idea. Um, he built an audience while he wrote the book, while he did the challenges that became the content for his book, all right? I'll give you another, another great example here. Shirley MacLaine uh, did this book called uh, The Camino, which um, for those of you that, that may not know, there is this ancient pilgrimage that goes through the, the Pyrenees uh, mountains to a... Um, uh, to a cathedral in Spain uh, called, and it's called uh, the, the Camino uh, or Santiago de Compostela. Um, and what, what this is, is it's, it's an ancient pilgrimage that hunt for hundreds of years, Europeans particularly have been leaving their house and walking across the, the Pyrenees, uh, basically up the coast of Spain to uh, right around where the bones of, I believe, St. Saint, uh, Saint James the Apostle are laid to rest, supposedly. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of folks that do this pilgrimage called the Camino, um, uh, basically take it because of the challenge it is. Most of them walk it. Um, sometimes, depending on where you start in Europe, it, it could take up to three months to actually do the, do the Camino. Well, Shirley MacLaine, again, smart uh, person that she is, uh, she, again, documented that whole uh, journey through the, uh, th through the Camino. And uh, for, for a lot of um, the, the book, and, and I think this was a much shorter time frame, by the way. I think this was uh, like uh, three or four or five months, something like that, much less than a year. Uh, but, but again, the idea was that she set a challenge for herself. She did the challenge and she documented what happened along the way. Here's another, uh, another example of uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, this is uh, um, Rise, How a House Built a Family. Now, this is a, a super interesting story <clears throat> um, about uh, Kara 
Brookins, who was a single mother of four children, who essentially needed a house. Um, and she went to YouTube, just okay, I'm not, what I'm doing here and what I want to just point out is that the challenges could be all over the map. So I want to, I, I want you to kind of think they don't have to be these, these grandiose, um, big challenges. They could be smaller challenges like this. This person, um, basically did a, uh, they, she watched YouTube videos and then employed um, her four children to actually build the house that you see behind her, okay? So the, the, that again, and then documented it, built a big following as she did, and, um, and it became a, you know, a very, very successful book. And, um, and she did all the shows and, you know, uh, and, and, and it, it became, Something again using this same exact model that I, that that we're, we're talking about setting out a figuring out a challenge, taking part in the challenge, documenting the challenge, building a, a, a platform as you go so that when you have your book come out, you've got a group to sell to and not only is it a group to sell to but they're uber fans they, they if they followed you through the process they're invested in you. They're invested in the challenge. They're invested in your failures and they're invested in your successes. That's one of the reasons why this is such a great model to use in some cases, not every case. Here's another um, example um, where this group of guys uh, here in Austin uh, decided to, uh, to do a taco a day. Uh, they, did, they did not set it. And that's the other thing I wanna make, I wanna point out here. You do not have to do this with, uh, with just a book. I mean, they did this uh, as a as a thing on on Twitter, but you don't, you know, the way that you build the platform um, is basically the same way. The way that the the the, uh, the information gets disseminated can be anything. It could be an ebook. It could be an audio book. It could be a it could be a documentary with film. We'll we'll see some examples of that here in a second. But but the idea, the paradigm, the model is the same over and over and over again. And that's one of the things I wanted to show you. Here, um, I think this guy, uh, Morgan Spurlock, uh, he, uh, he took and, and ate McDonald's for a month and uh, put out this uh, video called uh, Super Size Me. Same, same idea. So there are tons of uh, benefits to this particular approach. First off, um, let's talk about the, the an opportunity for, from your standpoint why this may be attractive for, for you and what you want to, to do. This is an opportunity to work on maybe a pet project um, or some sort of a goal that you've always had in the back of your mind to work on. Um, and the more unique that that goal is, um, the better it, po it potentially can be. It also, again, helps you to build that author platform by reporting your, uh, your triumphs and your travails um, as you sort of progress through the challenge to achieve whatever, whatever you're going to end up um, uh, achieving with, with regard to your challenge. Because sometimes these challenges go very wrong, right? But again, that's, that's, a, part of the, that's, that's a whole part of the reason why uh, these are so... Um, engaging and interesting for people to come and watch because it's kind of like a NASCAR race. You don't know when somebody's going to wipe out. The same is true here, right? Um, and it's, it's a little bit longer, you know, time frame, obviously. But again, that's, that's sort of the idea. And the, the other cool thing about this is that it, it allows you to reduce what you experiences and uh, uh, those things that you learned along the way to reduce those into a uh, into a book of some kind, and then um, it also because you've built up a following along the way, allows you to have that platform to then launch a book. I mean, you know, if 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 your challenge gets um, a lot of attention, even if you don't have a book contract coming into this, but suddenly you have you know, several um, hundred thousand Instagram people watching your stories or um, or you've got a big following on one of the other social platforms, 
you become a, a lot more attractive to uh, to publishers. Why? Because now you've got a group to sell to. I mean, that's one of the that's one of the things that is so um, crucial and, and vital today. If you want to actually get published by um, a you know a traditional quote unquote traditional publish, not self published in other words, they they want to know. Hey, do we have <laughs> you know do we have sales or do we have to gin up the sales? They look at your platform. That's why platform is so so uh, important. And of course. Again, de depending on the uniqueness of the uh, of the challenge you set for yourself, it's also a lot easier to do a, a media book tour because if you could if you could encapsulate the the challenge like um, like AJ Jacobs did into a you know a book title, the year of living biblically, that's um, that, that's 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 a really great log line, right? That that's easy to describe to people. It's easy to sell, therefore, okay. All right, so let's talk about choosing a topic, choosing a challenge, so to speak. Let me take a drink of water. Are, are you all getting this? Is this is this landing? I know I don't know. I'm trying to trying to figure. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find the chat here and communicate with you all. I I find it very interesting, Daniel. Oh, okay. Thank thank you, David. I appreciate it. Daniel, I, I do have a question, yep. uh, and it is in the chat. Um, I'm trying to find the chat. It, how would this work? How would this work for fiction authors? I'm not sure that it would necessarily work for fiction authors, um, unless um, it you you designed a um, a uh, a challenge that incorporated what you, <laughs> basically you, you write, you, you live it, but then you write it as fiction. Well, I think uh, that uh, for a fiction writer, you can, you can start blogging about the challenge of writing your book. For sure. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly another, but that's yet another, uh, uh, challenge that you could take i don't want to use the word challenge but i mean but it's more more of a, a the experiments let's talk about choosing the topic here are there any other questions before i move on no okay um and hopefully i could find the chat here i'm not too familiar with zoom uh all right so let's talk about choosing a talent um first off this is like any other book project research whether um whether you um you want to know before you sign on and commit to doing one of these uh, challenges that there is a market for whatever it is that you're going to produce at the end, right? Is there a market for it or is there potentially uh, some market for it? So what are the potential benefits to you and your readers? That's a great first question. And uh, are you passionate enough or interested enough in the topic to actually see the challenge through. This is a, a lot of a, a lot of times I see um, where you know they think it's a good idea, but to actually see it through, that you've got to be passionate about it. Because again, in order for this to really work, you're actually putting yourself through this challenge. That's one of the cool things about it. Uh, we don't know how you're going to react. You don't know if you're going to quit. You don't know if you know you're, there's going to be some major you know trap door somewhere. Um, but again, it's a very cool way to to document that. And um, the other really important point, uh, especially if you are a um, a, uh, a nonfiction author, is do you have or can you offer some sort of a back end big ticket offer in the book, okay? What do I mean by that? I mean that somebody finds your book, finds your challenge um, and, and becomes enamored of you, bonds with you. Now, now, they, now they want more of you. Do you have more of you to sell in a coaching package, a, uh, a, a course, um, a retreat, uh, other books that you've written, okay? Do, what do you have that can, that, that can sort of naturally follow, uh, follow up on this? Again, super important that um, you do that uh, so that you can, uh, once again, you can 
make an intelligent decision as to whether or not a topic is right or a or a challenge, a particular challenge. When I say when I say topic, I'm really saying challenge, but whether it's really right for you and and for your goals. Again, uh, I I believe that having a a uh, a garden path to a big ticket offer somewhere along the lines makes a lot of sense. But again, that's uh, uh, one of the other considerations. Okay, so let's talk about designing this um, experiment, this, ja this, this journey, this challenge. Um, the, the question you need to ask yourself is, what is the purpose of the exp uh, experiment? You know, what are you trying to do? Um, and maybe why, okay? Um, how long will it run? You know, as you've seen, we've, we've had uh, some that have been a couple months, uh, some that have been a couple or a year, um, and some that have been only a month. Maybe, maybe there's, you could actually do this in a shorter period of time, maybe even a week, okay? Um, again, those are questions that you need to answer or at least pose uh, so that you could, make an informed decision as to whether a particular challenge is right for you or not. Then, um, then you need to ask yourself, do you need any outside help to make this happen? I don't know. Uh, do you? I mean, again, it depends on the, the challenge. Do you need some sort of outside help? You need people to come deliver you food, for example, <laughs> you know, um, or whatever it happens to be. You, don't, you need to know that as well. And then you really only want to design a, an experiment that you could fully commit to. So that's really uh, because, you know, you don't want to be doing this for, for not, uh, you want to, uh, you want to see it through for, for better or worse um, and go through with this. Okay. So that's another thing that you're, you're always looking at when you're making this decision as to how to frame your experiment, how to frame your challenge. The next really crucial thing is how will you report your progress, okay? Uh, because again, a big, big selling point from my perspective of this sort of approach is <clears throat> um, be, being able to build that platform, right? So, and you're gonna need to report as you go along. So are you going to do that at, um, as, a, as a blog or as a podcast, YouTube channel or Facebook fan page? It doesn't matter how you report or really where you report as long as you, you choose one place and then you commit to actually doing the reporting. Okay. That, and that's the other thing is how often will you report? Are you going to check in daily, weekly, monthly? Again, depend. This makes it makes sense, and then um, it's really good, uh, I think, to to think about your challenge in phases. Um, like, oh, first, I, first, I need to do this, and then I need to do that, and then the next sort of logical step is this. But think about the the phases of whatever your challenge is as basically chapter titles or in sub chapter titles. So be thinking about that as well. Now, uh, we've talked about building a platform. So um, one of the biggest advantages to this approach is again, to, to build that or to build that group of fans. Uh, and they become, as I said, invested in that journey and outcome because, and this is the important thing, um, they live vicariously through you. You are living for them as you do one of these challenges. Think about when you get wrapped up in watching somebody do something great or different, you're living through them. That's one of the things that attracts people uh, to whatever it is you're doing. Um, and then, of course, you need to report on how things are going. Uh, you know, your setbacks, your struggles, your successes. And this is the other really, really cool thing that you could do with this model um, is you can get feedback from your followers as you do this. You can get um, advice and opinions um, that, that may help you, right? Um, uh, another, another example of this, by the way, 
um, was that uh, the Julia Julia um, book that came out where, the, where where Julia made three all all the recipes in the Julia Child cookbook. Same kind of idea. But again, she had feedback and, and advice from people when she's on her blog and doing this, right? So uh, this is, by the way, the same group of people that you will later draw on to, uh, to uh, create your book launch team as well, okay? Now, let's actually talk about writing uh, the book, writing the book. Um, as I said, it's easier to do drafts um, uh, or draft chapters as you go and, and make uh, each. I, I recommend, if you can, to write as you're going through your challenge, essentially, um, or at least consider dictating your thoughts as you go. And then when the uh, experiment or journey is over, it is actually imperative um, that you finish the book, right? Uh, so many, I mean, I, I will be the first to admit that I have many, many unfinished writing projects, you know, show of hands. I, I think uh, many of us do. But if you're going to do all this, it goes back to that commitment. You got to finish it. You got to start what you finish. Um, and then and then set a deadline before you start and figure out how many daily words you must write to, to meet that deadline uh, as, you're, as you're actually going through this. Um, I, I also think that it, it can be distracting to write and do a challenge at the same time, um, which is one of the reasons why I love the idea of, of just doing a, uh, a, a audio you know, dictation and, and then have that transcribed and that could become the foundation of some of your uh, chapters in um, when you actually sit down to, to clean it all up. And then um, I also believe, and I'm a big believer in this, uh, a calendar writing um, every day into your, uh, I mean, that, if, you are, if you are a serious author, uh, you, should, you should have writing calendared into your, uh, into, your, you know, into your calendar every day. It should be on your calendar every day and you should be writing every day. Um, and the idea here, of course, is to don't get up until you've written that many words, whatever, whatever that number is for you. I know for me, uh, I have a hard time sitting and writing any more than 500 words. And for, I know some of you are like, oh my God, I, I could sit for, you know, I can crank out 10,000 words or, or, or 4,000 real easy. That's, that's pretty much impossible for me. But it, again, it's all different for each and every one of us. And that's the other really uh, cool thing about this is it works as long as you commit to it. And then again, don't get up until you've written whatever that word amount is for the day. So here are the sort of the steps um, that uh, I, I like to think about in terms of, so these are the steps in the, the monomyth or the hero's journey. Um, and the thing that I like to think about in terms of you applying your challenge to this framework is think about, okay, you know, going, you know, sort of uh, penciling in for, you know, call to adventure, the refusal of the call, all these steps essentially that go through um, the, the hero's journey. Do you have analogous or can you foresee, uh, you know, analogous storylines, analogous happenstances that march and lock step that coincide with each one of these? It doesn't have to, by the way, I want to make sure we're real clear about this. Um, you don't, you, you don't have to follow the hero's journey exactly if, if there were such a thing, but you, but be mindful, get, get four or five of these, you know, in, in uh, you know, into the, into your challenge, build them into the challenge. Uh, it, it goes a lot further at resonating with the audience that you you're trying to build as you do this. Okay. Finally, let's talk about publishing the book. Do you want to do you want to go indie publishing or traditional trade publisher? Which, by the way, I'll just say, if you want a traditional trade publisher, um, uh, this this method is going to make it easier on you to get a publishing deal um, because, once again, the idea behind it is that you are building a platform as you go. 
right? So at the end, and it's a it's an engaged platform. Um, so, and of course, you're gonna know all of this stuff, like uh, make sure it's well-written, edited, has pro interior, gorgeous cover, all that. Uh, I am a huge believer, by the way, let's talk about um, this other point on making sure that your book is in all available formats, all available formats and on all available um, uh, marketplaces. So what I advise authors when they are self-publishing and they're self-publishing is I put, uh, I put up or have them put up books on the following places. And I don't have a slide for this, but let me just mention them briefly. Of course, you know, needs to go up on Amazon, uh, both as print and paperback. Okay, so that gets you on Amazon, great. Uh, the next uh, thing that I usually will tell folks is that they, they should have their books up on uh, Ingram Spark. Ingram Spark gets, it gets your paperbacks um, into the places where um, many brick and mortar uh, retailers feel comfortable um, with, with ordering them, as well as libraries, which is another big market for books like this, by the way. Then um, for that's for the paperback, Ingram Spark. Then for the um, for the uh, ebook, I um, I have them uh, go to and, and uh, start accounts at Draft to Digital. And Draft to Digital is um, a it's Draft to Digital. That's Draft D R A F the number two digital dot com. Um, and uh, they essentially syndicate your ebook. Um, and they syndicate it to a lot of uh, different places. Um, you know, you can, if you want, you could elect to, to put it up on, into Amazon that way, but of course you're on Amazon anyway, so don't worry about that. Uh, but put it up on Barnes and Noble and Tolino and Kobo, and it gets put up into Overdrive. Uh, and let's, and that's, a, that's an important point right now, especially um, on it being in Overdrive is because the ebook market in libraries, as far as um, not just ebooks, but ebooks and audiobooks, is booming with libraries right now. Why? Because people aren't going to the library; they're they're borrowing books on their uh, on their on their apps through Libby and other other platforms. Um, so you want to have um, your books available as uh, ebooks through OverDrive. So that they can then be available to to libraries to to purchase into their collections. Then, um, from the audiobook side of it, I uh, I recommend that they have both the uh, an ACX account um, and uh, and 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 not do the exclusive Amazon thing. I'm not. I mean, I I, I love you know Amazon. I'm not disparaging Amazon. Uh, but I'm I'm saying that there are a lot of books sold other places other than Amazon that you limit yourself greatly if you don't have your books at other places, including your audiobooks. So what I'm saying is put your put your audiobooks up on ACX. Don't do you know don't 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 do the exclusive thing, and then either uh, do Find a Way Voices, which is connected with um, it's findawayvoices.com, and it, that is also connected with. Uh, draft to digital, or um, another another site called Authors Republic for your audiobooks. And once again, uh, with Find Away Voices, the reason why I like Find Away uh, Voices to do uh, to put up your audiobooks is uh, it also gets your audiobook into that library market. Okay, um, and and that's again a booming market at the moment, and it probably will be for the foreseeable future. Okay, so I. Wanted to make sure uh, that we're all clear on not just Amazon, all the big sites, and I've given you all of uh, the places to uh, to do that as well. And then, of course, once your book is up and uh, and rocking, then you want to launch and promote your book. Um, use your preferred channel, and what I mean by that is, uh, are you on Facebook? Or have you started a YouTube channel where people could follow you? Uh, whatever, whatever, whatever that that place is, you're going to use that channel because that's where people are used to seeing you. Um, then, then you want to get your launch team ready to write and post reviews when the book goes live, because what's going to happen is this: um, you are going to, again, depending on the success of the challenge that you choose for yourself, uh, you're going to attract a 
core group of people that are really into your challenge, whatever that challenge happens to be. These are the people you want to recruit into, um, uh, uh, you know, your launch team. And, and when I say write and post reviews, I'm talking about write and post reviews on their own blog when that, uh, when that book uh, goes live. And then, of course, uh, contact the local media, uh, pitch stories uh, to magazines, blogs about your experiences, all of that. And, of course, the more um, provocative, the more interesting your challenge, the easier that's going to be to sell, it, sell to the media uh, as well. All right. By the way, uh, I'm going to take your questions. I just want to make sure that folks knew that if you wanted to get my brand new book, I have, uh, have a brand new book called uh, How to Make a TV Channel, that you can get this. Uh, and by the way, this is available at like, like I, it's, on, it's on Amazon, but you can get it here at DanielHallWebinars.com forward slash free bonus uh, for free, along with an, a lot of other stuff. So with that, that's what I got for you. I, I hope you dug it. Thank you, David. Uh, does anybody have it? Uh, Daniel, I just called you David Chang. Um, <laughs> does anybody have any questions for Daniel? Well, well you mentioned this uh, Julia and Julia. There it is. Same exact idea. You see it all the time, in fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I found this very interesting, you know, I don't do nonfiction, but I think I can apply some of what you said to fiction. Um, because it, it does sound like if you're connecting with your audience, that's the main goal. Well, the, and get, getting, yes, connecting with them and getting them invested in that journey with you. And that's the reason why they will connect with you. Right. So it, yeah, for, it, fiction, for fiction, I think you could take one of the characters of a book and have the character do something and, and do that, you know, as part of the challenge, you know, you being the author. Well, that's an interesting concept. You know, yeah. Daniel, it seems like there's a gazillion challenges out there on the internet right now. <laughs> a lot of them being five day, 21 day. Um, you know, a lot of people doing that whole motif that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I love this um, uh, idea that uh, Jeff uh, just just said. He, he says, you know, fiction writers do the nano, uh, the the national novel writing month. Right. That could be your challenge, right? You could document that challenge, and depending on the type of book that you're writing, that could be really interesting. You know, I could foresee that being a pretty pretty cool challenge to to be able to do. So I'm thank you, Jeff. I, I'm I'm glad that you're you're thinking about that. And would you consider um, vlogs, writing vlogs on YouTube a good way, like if you're doing fiction, a good way to do a challenge that way your audience is watching you step by step trying to write this, all the struggles of trying to write the novel. And then by the end, you can be like, and here is the novel. Yeah, I, I, I adore that idea. That's super smart. Um, and not only that, but you can have folks um, that, um, that will, can chime in. And maybe even, you know, name a character. And, uh, you know, again, you, you could use this as a way to build a relationship with a, a group of people that is very, very strong. They, they, they end up loving you, right? And that's what it's all about. That's, if you want long-term success as an author, it's giving, giving enough value in whatever it is you're doing. By the way, recreation and fiction is a needed now more than ever, okay? So that's a huge value in, in the marketplace right now. Uh, people are just going nuts for fiction right now. Um, and, but, the, but the point being is that that struggle that they see you going through as you do your, your vlog, um, Mamma mia! They're going to, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna uh, identify with that and relate to you because of that, and and feel your pain and feel your triumphs. That's the really cool thing about this. That's why I like it. That's a really good point. 
uh, thank you. Uh, let's see. I, I miss everyone. I just want to say, um, go ahead. Yeah, and you talked about the hero's journey. In, in case people in the audience don't know this guy, Chris Vogler, uh, he wrote this book called The Writer's Journey, Mythic Structure for Writers. And it's now 25 years old. So there's, there was a 25th anniversary celebration about this book. This is all about Carl, uh, uh, Joseph Campbell and Carl Jung. Because Joseph Campbell's, a lot of it is Jungian. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, and Daniel mentioned Star Wars and George Lucas. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of Star Wars is based on, on this whole hero's journey that, that Daniel talked about. Most most of the endearing um, stories that have, I mean, that, that that's one of the reasons why it makes it a hero's journey kind of kind of story because it resonates through generations, mm -hmm. and and that's kind of the cool thing about it. Yeah, in in this Vogler um, book, he talks about Willa Cather, who said. There are only two or three human stories, and they keep repeating themselves as fiercely as if they had never happened before. <laughs> wow, uh, truer words never been spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I dig that. Uh, let's see. Um, any other any other questions that we uh, we have here? But I, I really do. Um, I, I, I do challenge you to think about uh, applying this uh, idea to one of your future uh, writing projects. Uh, I, I think that you'll, you'll see um, that it, it has its flaws like everything else, uh, but it's pretty, pretty good um, at developing that content, um, you know, developing an audience and then, and then having, having a, a, a group to sell to once you've got a, a book together and, and, you know, these people that, that really find you and resonate with you, they, um, they, they they're, they're always going to be interested in what you're doing and what you're doing next and your next piece of work. And that's, again, uh, the, the one thing now I haven't, I mean, I've, I've done very, very well as an author over the years. Um, not a mega superstar at all, but um, but the one thing that that has really helped me is I've always been mindful of you. I've always been mindful of my audience, um, trying to always bring the the most value uh, possible that's really going to move the needle for good in in your life or in their life or the or the or the lives of those folks that you are. Put on this planet to serve, uh, and I and it does come from a heart of service. So um, it, when you when you approach a, a vlog or a project like this with that heart of service, um, not necessarily for you know for you benefiting you, but how is it going to benefit your audience or your 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 future audience as you build it as you go? So um, so yeah, all right. What other, what other questions we have? Can I ask you, uh, <clears throat> uh, I've got a, uh, you know, a website for my uh, imprint and I'm getting, uh, I send out a newsletter about once a month and I try to vary the content and make it, you know, generally interesting. Sometimes it's political, sometimes it's other news and sometimes it's what I'm doing, but I'm really afraid of, of just talking about myself and what I'm doing all the time, I'm afraid I'm just going to turn people away. Is that is that something I should be worried about? Um, it, you know, it all it, it yes and no. Um, like everything else, it's context and expectations. Um, if if somebody joins your email list expecting to get um, uh, your personal insights. Um, and you give them something other than your personal insights, that doesn't meet expectations and you're gonna tick people off because of that. The opposite of that is also true. If you set the expectation that, um, uh, that uh, you know, you're going to get uh, new 
you know, cutting edge uh, techniques and strategies and then you, you, you keep talking about yourself, that's going to tick people off. So it's, it's about setting expectations. And as long as everyone's on the same page with what's going to happen, no problem. Well, I think it's too late for me to set expectations for the people on my list. Oh, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I, I don't agree with that at all. I think what you could do um, is you could, you could simply segment the list. You could send out an email that says, hey, look, I'm going to start, um, I, I want to start doing some weekly, I think I have some value to add with, with my own personal insights. Uh, if you're interested in hearing my personal insights, go here to subscribe or click this button to, uh, to at least segment them. Um, because you, and you'll, you're going to be surprised. Some of you do, some people do follow you because of you. And then some people follow you because of what you're interested in or your, the titles that you publish. Okay. So, um, I, I don't think that the, the, the ship has sailed and it doesn't, by the way, you don't have to keep pounding them over the head, Albert, ask them once. If you're interested, come over here. This is where I'm going to be talking about this. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, but then I end up with two lists, and I have to I have to come up with content for both of them. Oh, well, that that's a problem of a different color, as they say. <laughs> Mixing my metaphors, a horse of a different color, as they say. <laughs> well, Daniel, I want to thank you for coming on today. This has been eye opening and a very enjoyable talk you've put on today. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I want to thank um, my friend, uh, David. Uh, thank you so much for asking me, David. I appreciate you uh, doing that and, and facilitating this. Um, and um, let, me, let me mention one other thing that you made. Uh, you sort of covered this, but there's a movie called Adaptation with uh, Nicolas Cage, Meryl Streep, and Chris Cooper. And it's about a, a screenwriter who is try, Charlie Kaufman, who's trying to write a screenplay based on the novel called The Orchid Thief by Susan Orleans. So it mixes this guy trying to, trying to write a screenplay with the author of The Orchid Thief who, who, who gets a contract or an offer to make a movie. So it's, it's actually a very interesting movie, but it's got a lot of elements of storytelling in the movie and one of the guys brian cox who you know the actor plays in a very short scene uh robert mckee and robert mckee if, if, is without question one of the top two or three story educators in the world who literally has coached hundreds of people who have won academy awards and golden globes and all that kind of stuff so it's a very interesting movie. It's very convoluted, but it's an interesting movie. Nicholas Cage, Meryl Streep, and Chris Cooper are in it. But it, Name it, it again. It's called Adaptation. And uh, the, guy, the guy, this guy, Robert McKee, who wrote Story, um, you know, Brian Cox had, does a cameo uh, of, of this guy. And actually, you could see online, Brian Cox talking to Robert McKee about that cameo. Cool. By the way, um, I just want to point out an, another, uh, another thing, and, and, and I, I often kind of get um, kind of sidetracked, and, and I realize that um, things that are self-evident to me are not necessarily self-evident to you. Okay. So one of the reasons why I wanted to give this book away for free, the one that you see on your screen right now, how to make a TV channel is because it is a way to actually disseminate this information that, that you're, you're putting together. So at the end of this, you could actually have not just a book, but your own channel on Roku and Amazon fire TV um, as, as a really cool way to, Again, disseminate that that information, and um, and you know it's it's a brand new up and coming, not brand new. It's been around for a couple of years, but the trend 
is uh, is people are cutting their the cords of their cable and and their satellite television in lieu of streaming media like Roku and Amazon Fire and Apple TV and others. Um, so if you have this huge group of people that are are watching these uh, these types of televisions and these types of shows, where you could have your own channel, you could be up you know next to USA Today and and ABC and all these other things. That's what this book is about. That's why I wanted to give this book away uh, to you uh, for free, so that you could do that if if you're so inclined to do it. Are there any publishers that are doing that? Uh, myself. Doing what, Jeff? You mean turning? Uh, a uh, having their own uh, channels on these media. I mean, because, you know, you, you have to come up with a lot of content. And so, you know, if you're a publisher and you have a lot of authors and you can start featuring them uh, in, in, in various ways, but for a single <clears throat> author to maintain a channel and provide all that content seems rather daunting to me. Yes, I agree. Um, one, one of the things that you certainly, uh, well, first off, you don't need a ton of, you don't need a ton of content. You need about five videos to get it started. So, uh, and, and the reason why I say five videos is that five videos fills the screen. This is cause, cause this is video, this is VOD, this is video on demand. So as long as somebody clicks on, you know, installs your channel and it's about the, the, um, the subject matter of your, uh, of your, whatever it is your subject matter is, um, you're, you're good to go. The, the, the key is to keep them coming back, right? To keep in, in, in order to keep them coming back, you're exactly right, Jeff. Um, you, you've got to keep content coming, but that's not as difficult as, at least it isn't for me. I mean, I just turn on the, the video and I start talking, um, but, then I could see for some people it might be, not, may not be, may not work. But if you're a publisher, this is this is a gold. I mean, what I did, as a matter of fact, I've done this with some of my authors. I have a I have a channel on uh, on Roku and Amazon Fire called Book Lovers TV. Go look it up. Uh, very well rated, um, and that's exactly what I do. Is I will interview my authors, and um, and feature my authors. I've given them a platform. So now I'm much more than a, um, not, I'm much more than a publisher, much more than a publisher. Now I am also the media. I have, uh, you know, now I, I, I can provide a lot more to my authors or the authors that I'm helping um, because now I'm the media. Now I can, I can guarantee you're gonna be on that show. You see? And then you can always syndicate. <laughs> Well, that's and what's going on. That's what's yes. happening. This is syndication. Right. That's what's going on. Yeah. And by the way, the, the one thing that um, I'll just mention here, the, the tool that I use to, to do these author interviews for, uh, for this is called uh, StreamYard, um, StreamYard.com. And um, uh, I, I really, really like it. It's, um, and I'm not affiliated with it. No, no, you know. Uh, I get nothing from it, but I, it's the, what I personally use to do these, uh, to do these interviews. Yeah. I think one of the people at IPNE uses it for her, her, um, Charlotte, her, does. Charlotte does. Yeah. One thing I did want to mention, Dan, which just touches upon what you're saying, that guy, Robert McKee, that I, that I just mentioned, who wrote this book, he is literally saying with what's going on out there in the world, long form TV, he believes will be the next big, big wave. Um, so if you can come up with a series that goes over multiple episodes in, you know, like a Desperate Housewives, it goes on for multiple seasons, uh, a, a Game of Thrones, you know, instead of a one and a half hour go to the movies, uh, you suck them in with, you know, 40 minute segments that go on and on and on. So. I mean, you know, YouTube is out there with a gazillion videos. Your own channel is, is proprietary, sort of. So exactly. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ways to sort of mix and match. But literally, you know, when you said people are looking for escape, you're looking for fiction. Um, the whole thing about fiction and character, if you can, you know, well, why does Harry Potter sell what it does? You know, it's because this thing goes on and on and on and on and on. And 
I mean, we have all seven videos or whatever it is. We have all the Game of Thrones. We have all the Desperate Housewives. You know, it's like you, you, and, and this pandemic is making, we're, we're now in a red zone or whatever. We have to stay in again. You know, what are people doing? They're watching Netflix. They're reading they're, books. They're binge watching. <laughs> so they need content. That's, you know. Exactly. So Jeff, you, you just have to create the content, find the right channels and, you know. So if, with no other questions, any other questions? <laughs> I had a comment for Jeff. Um, creating content can be a real struggle, uh, as you pointed out. And I think one of the things that, that eases the struggle is getting really clear about what you're trying to do, having more clarity about what's your purpose, so that you always have this centering point to go back to that then helps you create the content. Without that, you're just going off in all different directions. And as you said, each potential email newsletter uh, or, or blast has a different focus. Sometimes it's personal, sometimes it's uh, product oriented, but if you can always have a chance to tie those things together. So even, even if you start out talking about something that's very personal and, and the, uh, the process that you're going through, you always want to tie it to something and tying it to that uh, core uh, is really how it then becomes successful and you have much less trouble thinking up content. And I, I'd suggest one way to do that, and I'm not one of them, so I'm not talking about it from a commission, but working with somebody like Daniel or another coach who could help you find out what is that core you really want to be focusing on and how to get better access to it inside yourself. I and mean, you may be able to do it on your own. Maybe you've already done it. But sticking with it and maintaining that consistency is what will create massive amounts of content. Thank you, Ray. All right, so if we're done here, thank you, uh, Daniel, again. Um, Thanks a lot, Daniel. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is this has been great. I, I love the TV channel idea. I think I'm going to take you up on that idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you when you do uh, there, I actually have a YouTube video that also it's kind of companies of the book, also free. Um, so you just just download it and uh, and go with it. And then if you if you have any uh, questions with it, just reach out to me. Okay, I'll I'll help you. Will do. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. So much. And if Thank you, you so much. Way, Appreciate the opportunity. If you do it the way Jeff suggests and create that kind of channel, you too could become president of the United States. <laughs> Mamma mia. Wow. <laughs> Spoken from a Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> Ray, I heard they're building a wall. Yeah. <laughs> and Ameri Americans are lining up to take pole vaulting lessons. Okay, now we're now we're just going down a down a path, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much, Daniel. I'll, I'll catch you later. Thank you for the right, opportunity. You, Bye, everyone. Thank you, Daniel. Bye. Right. Bye. -bye.